This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Man killed a five gun seized in Portmore shootout. On their way along the Dyke Road in Portmore, St. Catherine, after armed thugs and the lawmen traded bullets on Thursday morning. Four high-powered weapons and one handgun have reportedly been seized. One man was also reportedly shot and killed. Head of the St. Catherine South Police Division, Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips confirmed the shootout. Superintendent Phillips informed the news that the alleged gunman is yet to be identified. There has been an ongoing war in Gregory Park between rival gangs. The warring resulted in a curfew being imposed in the area. Things came to a head on Tuesday when several houses were set on fire during a shootout between gangs. Cops a sick man who paid a 13-year-old girl for sex. The Mapen police in Clarendon are searching for a man who is accused of sexually assaulting a 13-year-old girl after reportedly offering her money for sex. The man and the girl reportedly live in different sections of a popular community within the Mapen police area. Police said that the man, whose name has not yet been released, is being sought for the offense of sexual grooming, sexual touching and having sex with a person under 16 years. It is reported that sometime in May 2022, the suspect invited the 13-year-old student to his house and seduced her into having sex with him. The police recently learned about the incident and spoke with the student who confirmed that she had a sexual relationship with the man. Efforts to arrest the man have so far proven futile. Woman's body found in bushes in St. Mary Detectives of the Criminal Investigations Branch are probing the death of a 56-year-old Higgler in Eden Hill, St. Mary. The decomposed body of Anne-Marie Henderson of Eden Hill was found in bushes on Wednesday, six days after she was reported missing. It is reported that about 6 p.m. on Friday, Miss Henderson left home to visit an acquaintance nearby. When she did not return, a search was carried out by residents in her community. Investigators are trying to determine the cause of death. Miss Henderson's son, Mark McHugh, says her death has come as a shock to the community. I really come from this side that still in about. I know my, my, my mother and everybody on this side good, no? So when my mother, my mother went missing, it was, it was a bit shock to me, you know? Because, you know, especially my sister, them tell me say, she's not like that. She's never been away for so long, you know. So, I was just at work today and decide to come, decide to come, find out what I go on with the brothers and sisters. And at least me come run up in there, you know. Find a mother in a bush. Die, you know. Alleged a gunman shot dead outside a Mobe fire station. A shooting outside the Barnett Street Fire Station in Montego Bay, St. James on Wednesday night left an unidentified gunman dead and a security guard wounded. Superintendent Carlos Russell, commanding officer for the St. James Police Division, says a firearm was taken from the gunman. It's reported that sometime after 10 o'clock, two men armed with guns attacked and shot a security guard who was on duty at the gate of the fire station. The gunmen were challenged by other security guards who opened the fire hitting one of them. The other gunman escaped. The injured gunman died in hospital and the security guard was admitted. Several cars parked on the fire station compound were riddled with bullets during the incident. No positives to corporal punishment, says Juliet Holness. Deputy House Speaker Juliet Holness is holding on firmly to her stance against the corporal punishment as a means of disciplining children despite her criticism since she first voiced her position in 2016. In my observation over the years, having been a parent myself and having been a child who was spanked, it is not the best way to get our children to listen. It really does not force them to listen. And in addition to not having the positive impact of being able to teach them through discussion, through helping them to understand where they are wrong, or to showing and teaching by example, it literally prepares them to not be able, because of that missing link in communication, to resolve conflicts when we get older, other than by through violence, she said. 
Holness, who is also the Member of Parliament for St. Andrew East Rural, was speaking with the news on Wednesday following her keynote address at an awards ceremony at the Mount Carey Baptist Church for 108 high-performing primary exit profile students in St. James Southern. I have heard people indicate that the Bible says you should not spare the rod and spoil the child. I grew up in the church, and although the rod of correction is taken by many to be a physical rod, I do not subscribe to that. I do not see biblical days as a time when people were hitting children, said Holness. She added that corporal punishment as part of Jamaica's culture has its roots in slavery, urging citizens to shun the practice. We literally were taken into slavery and beaten, and then our children were raised into slavery and beaten into submission, Holness reasoned. Over time, if you look at what it has done to society, instead of being able to communicate with each other, to sit down and resolve whatever conflicts or disagreements there are, the easiest thing for people to do is to vent their frustration and inability to understand and to communicate is by aggression and by hitting. In 2017, Prime Minister Andrew Holness declared that corporal punishment was not in keeping with the Sustainable Development Goals under the United Nations Development Program, suggesting that Parliament debate the issue to put an end to the practice as a means of discipline in homes and the schools. However, in 2019, reports circulated that teachers were still embracing corporal punishment, including the use of straps or their hands. Then, Jamaica's Teachers Association President, Dr. Garth Anderson, said his organization has been encouraging educators to eliminate the practice. Amma found in abandoned a car in Kingston. Several rounds of ammunition were seized on Ellison Lane, south side in Kingston, by a team of police officers on Wednesday, August 3. Reports from the Ellison Road Police are that about midday, lawmen were on patrol in the area, acted on information and conducted a search of an abandoned Toyota Camry motor car. 25.56 cartridges were subsequently found in a plastic bag inside the motor vehicle. No one was arrested in connection with the seizure. U.S. nurse who sued a Pier 1 ordered to pay $1.3 million in security to proceed with the case. A Florida nurse who sued the operators of the popular Pier 1 entertainment venue in Montego Bay, St. James, has been ordered to pay more than $1 million as security for costs in order for her to claim against them to proceed. The Supreme Court determined that because she is an overseas resident, there was a risk that she could lose the claim and the defendants would be unable to recover legal costs from her. The nurse filed a negligence claim in 2018 based on an incident at a Pier 1 in 2014. She claimed that while on a visit from overseas, she stopped to use the bathroom and fell because the floor was wet and had an uncovered floor ramp. The Pier 1 operators denied her claim and in their defense argued that they were unaware of her accident and that the error was not laid out as she described. They also filed an application for the nurse to pay more than $2 million as security in case she lost the case because she had no identifiable assets in Jamaica. The nurse opposed the application and argued that this was unfair to her as she could not afford this sum and her case should proceed because it was strong. However, the Supreme Court ruled that Pier 1 satisfied the requirements under the law to get the security for cost, but it would not grant the full amount being sought. It ordered the nurse to pay the sum of $1.3 million as security by October this year, or her case would be struck out. It also ruled that no other proceedings should take place until the money was paid. Nepal Serve Enforcement Notice for Windalco to Remedy Real Cobra Pollution The National Environment and the Planning Agency has served an enforcement notice on Windalco's Yowatan operations to immediately remedy the situation at the Rio Cobra in St. Catherine, which has been polluted. Nepal's senior manager of the Environmental Management Subdivision, Richard Nelson, says that the notice was served on Wednesday afternoon. The notice is the latest development since effluent from the bauxite company polluted the river and caused a major fish kill on the weekend. This has angered residents and the fisherfolk in the area and prompted them to seek redress from Windalco 
and initiate court action seeking to get NEPA to enforce existing regulations. Mr. Nelson explained that NEPA's enforcement notice outlines specific things for wind Dalco to address and implement immediately. For them to, to remediate the year as quickly as possible because there is a fish kill, a very large fish kill, and quite quite a couple, several hundreds of fish, fishes have died. Um, we have also instructed them that they need to quickly have the, the process done to rehabilitate the river as quickly as possible. And this is by means of one, seizing the, the, the discharge and then do whatever neutralization process is required to bring back the water quality to, to, um, to normal background that is. We have collected all the details, all the, the information on the ground in terms of um, the, the, the water quality samples for analysis. We have done um, in situ or on the ground um, tests for things such as pH, which is an indication of any the increased levels of contamination, which we have confirmed has happened. Um, there's some, there some laboratory work to be done. We are also working with our stakeholders, um, such as the NIC and NWC, as to any potential impact that they may have. You may recall that we were in this position in 2019, and I did point out then that the agency took some action, including taking Windows to court based on investigation. In 2021, another incident happened, which is also in the court. Importantly, in 2019, when we serve an enforcement notice, there were certain instructions that Windalco got, one of them including increasing the capacity to hold more water we instructed them to, to, to increase the capacity, which they have in fact started. And um, based on the last check done by our engineers two weeks ago, they had 35% completion. So, so definitely NEPA has been doing what is required. When they got the environmental permit for the expansion, we also amended the permit to increase an environmental performance bond, which is really a financial instrument to hold them accountable for any such breaches. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.